Uh, just a note that we do have two uh, different presentations today, so please stick around for both. Um, but the first one, we're going to kick it off with both Kelly Allen from the Central Region Rock and Chris Knowles from WFO Paducah, and they will be talking about service backup and mutual aid. So take it away, Kelly. All right. Good. Thank you, Jenny. Good morning, everybody. Um, so not too long ago, you may have seen um, something come out about a new service backup and mutual aid paradigm. Uh, so I'm here to talk about uh, the new CR service backup supplement and the new philosophy for that. So this is all based on the 2023 to 2033 strategic plan for the weather service. And the whole point of it is to transform the weather service into a more nimble, flexible, mobile agency. And a big part of that is going to be optimizing ourselves for mutual aid and for things like service backup. So <clears throat> over time, it's become less and less about this is my forecast and more about this is our forecast as an agency, as one national weather service. So uh, we don't necessarily need to wait to be told what to do. Um, that's how we do in Central Region. Uh, we tend to lean forward and try to chart the path and see what works and what doesn't. So this is really an attempt to see what does work. In our current paradigm, AWIPS was not necessarily designed to do this, so it can get a little difficult. But over time, uh, the pieces of the puzzle have been put uh, in place to make it a little bit easier. So hopefully that will continue. We expect it will. So how do you find uh, the new service backup supplement? You can go to um, the uh, directives website if you wish, or if you'd like to find it on our Google site, you uh, go to this link here and it's underneath operations, and then you go to service backup. Uh, the service backup resources page will start with some basic service backup instructions. So these instructions in the middle there will uh, work basically for any office in a pinch. Most of you probably have your own set of instructions and that is perfectly fine. But if you don't, there's a set there. And right here on the left, we have uh, the list of the service backup triads. So if you need those in a pinch and you don't wanna go to the um, instruction or the uh, directives website, then you can go to that spot. It usually comes up a little faster. So if you scroll down just a little bit there to the middle of the page, you have to, it's got an expanding menu. Um, you'll find a service backup uh, document there. So there's what the supplement looks like. Uh, there was also a tech order that was put out that takes you through the steps of how to set up you, your new third service backup location. And this is all to support a, a new service backup philosophy. The old way you had your primary or your best buddy, your secondary, and if neither your primary or your secondary could back you up, then you would call the rock and do a tertiary backup. Tertiary backup is difficult. And even if you are success, successful in setting it up, it doesn't always work. Um, as we found out the hard way several times over the last five years. Um, it's usually only done if there is a catastrophic equipment failure. Um, it was rarely done in advance. It was, oh boy, we are now two offices. Great. Call in all the help we can get. Uh, the new paradigm is you go to all three of your backup options at once. Hopefully when you did uh, that tech order, it set you up to where it's easier for you to back up your new third backup office. Also a little bit newer um, service backup is plan in advance. We've done that um, on a couple of locations or a couple reasons in a couple of locations. Um, and we would set things up ahead of time um, if you have a lot of IDSS. So you can take your people uh, who've built these relationships with your local emergency managers and they would be the ones that would go out and do the DSS and all of the routine products would be taken care of by another office um, or another office could handle tasks. Um, so it's a little bit more a la carte than it used to be. 
Uh, we do have a mutual aid options menu. This was actually um, presented to the Omaha office after their tornadoes on April 26th and 27th of this year. So uh, the way it worked is the rock is constantly monitoring. Um, when there's big events, it doesn't matter if it's uh, midnight or if it's six in the evening, chances are we're watching. Um, so once we saw a significant tornado in a populated area, um, we found a time after the storms had passed and made a call to the Omaha office. So it was arranged ahead of time with the management team. Um, everyone was already sitting in the conference room, including Brian Smith. Um, even though he's retired, he's he's still an expert, um, especially with storm damage surveys. So he it was fun to see Brian. So we came up on the screen there in their conference room, and we went through these different options. So it's one thing to ask, you know, let us know if you need help. Um, it's another thing to ask, okay, these are the things that we can easily set up. And we go through step by step and um, allow folks to picture uh, maybe handing one of these off. And it, it depends on who you have, it depends on the event, it depends on the time of year, depends on leave. So it's gonna be different every time. And it usually requires a discussion. Um, in this instance, we had several different offices helping the affected offices. The affected offices are marked in red here, Omaha, Hastings, and Wichita. But even though Hastings was affected, they were still helping with, with damage surveys. Uh, North Platte helped with a remote mesoanalysis facilitation. Um, they did service backup operations in Bismarck. Um, Jacksonville, they even offered a remote mesoanalysis facilitator. So there are several different things um, that can be offered and it's, it's not the all or nothing paradigm like it used to be. So going back to that new backup option, if you look in uh, the directive or in the supplement, it has a map of who your new third backup option is. Your legacy primary and secondary backups remain in your toolbox, so those are not going to change. The third backup office was selected based on um, the following criteria. Um, these are just a few that that were considered. We didn't want the third backup option to be too close. Something that we came across in the past is that um, the primary and secondary were also being affected by the same storm system. So they didn't necessarily have the capacity to help with this event, whichever it was. So we didn't want it to be too close, but it can't be so far that you, the office doesn't have similar responsibilities whatsoever. Um, Complex terrain, as you folks know in the West, it's it's a different story. It, mountain meteorology is a thing. Same with marine. Um, those are very specific uh, sets of products and a very specific set of knowledge to know how to forecast that. Uh, core 30 airports, that's kind of a unique responsibility. So none of these really there's not necessarily a one-to-one -one match with all of these for all of the third backup offices but we did try to keep them within central region um, there's a couple offices on here who have their primary and secondary either one or both in um in another region or at least their legacy uh, so we really wanted to add a third option that stayed within central region um, and also we can continue to support our other regions as well without too much trouble. So another thing that was added to uh, the supplement was a list of primary mission essential functions. Um, there is a directive 10-2201 that defines a list of critical products, but it only lists critical products. You're not gonna find things like IDSS in that directive. Um, they are updating that, but it still may not include uh, things like IDSS because it's not a, a product that we push out to the world or to our partners. Um, so we made an attempt to offer guidance on what to triage and what to hand off to one of your backup offices or to a mutual aid office. 
uh, prioritizing things that require hyper-local expertise, like one-on-one -on -one DSS uh, partner engagement, that, that's really best kept uh, with the local office because of those relationships that you've built over the years. Short fuse warning statements, advisories, things like that, um, that's normally best kept in the local office. Um, and a big reason for that is that um, it's easier to do your one-on-one -on -one IDSS and you know who to call um, if there's a short, short fuse warning coming out that you think a, a partner needs a heads up on. Mission critical or specialized observations, like you can't really outsource an upper air launch. <laughs> so those things obviously you have to keep. Um, local media interviews, um, we found that those are really important core partners. And while we can definitely assist you from another office or from the rock even, um, there are still core partners. Um, so things like national media interviews, there's no reason that that can't be handed off to The Rock, especially if we have some good talking points. Um, and things like LSRs, you're getting those reports as they come in. It's easier for you, you to just do them during the event. But there's other things um, that aren't so hyper-local, and those are the things that are um, toward the bottom of the list that can be handed off in the event of an event. All right, shifting gears a little bit. Um, the new Madrid tabletop exercise was something that was spearheaded in the rock um, and by the Southeast uh, MIC group. Uh, this is something that they've been pushing for for a while. Um, like many things, COVID got in the way, so it got put off for a couple of years. However, we were able to reschedule it um, along with Ron Steve. He was also a big part of it. He's a lead forecaster in Louisville. So they uh, let us borrow him for a while to help plan this and execute it. Um, so really, it lined up very well, the timing of it with the release of the service backup supplement. So we, we got to test a lot of what was in the supplement. So that, that was pretty advantageous. Um, overall, the, the focus of the exercise um, was to assess the capability of multiple WFOs to in, invoke their COOP plan. Um, if there is something like a new Madrid, there's gonna be several offices that may be down hard for a while. This is something that we thought about as well during COVID, what happens if we have to close several offices at once? How do we test our coop? How do we approach service backup? So this was just another way of, of looking at that and also testing the supplement and specifically uh, the new backup option. So in this case, WFOs St. Louis and Paducah were subjected to injects, including communication outages, staffing issues, um, and enforce them into service backup status. Um, their, pri their legacy primary and secondary uh, were overwhelmed as well. So it, it really forced a backup three component testing and testing of the tech order and everything in it. So that was a really big part of the exercise. It revealed a high level of enthusiasm for mutual aid among offices. We have gotten used to helping each other at this point. Um, and it really takes a, a shift in your focus and a shift in your thinking to think this way. Um, and from what I've heard from uh, Ken Graham, we are ahead as a region as far as uh, offering backup and offering mutual aid. It's a little bit more part of our DNA and who we are. So it's a little bit easier, but it's it's still not easy. So it helps to test it and to do exercises like this to test it. Um, so future recommendations, it highlighted a need for uh, continuing this culture shift, continuing to talk about it, continuing to do things like RMA and to push the boundaries of mutual aid and what we can do to help one another. Um, and it emphasized the importance of coordination, collaboration, and documentation. 
Uh, we all know what it's like to be going a thousand miles an hour. It's difficult to step back and think, okay, who do I need to report this to? Is any of this reportable? How can I get help if I don't have it written down what happened? So it just kind of ran through some of those considerations. I do have a link to um, the after action, which is a lengthy and wonderful read if uh, you have time to read it. Um, it's been a busy spring, but I won't be busy forever, knock on wood. So there is a link to the AAR there. It's also on our services Google site. We have a link to all of our after action reviews. Um, so you can find it there. So I want to pull out a few of the action items for all offices that I thought were important and very relevant to this presentation. Um, we did what were called speed drills. There was a functional exercise portion on one day, and then the second day, there was a tabletop exercise. In the tabletop exercise, uh, we were in small groups and we were led through um, some questions. And some of those questions included, hey, can you go to your backup office and find their SDM? Uh, can you find who's on schedule right now? Um, and one of the things we found is that we can find our backup offices, Google sites, but we can't necessarily access all of the documents that we need to. And if you're in something like um, a new Madrid earthquake, you don't wanna have to spend time giving access to your Google site documents to your neighboring offices so they can help you. So that was one thing that we found just Take a minute when you can and make sure that everyone has access to your documents who needs it. Um, also, another finding was that there are common links that we need to use during an emergency. If someone is hurt, how do you report that? Um, what's the link for that? Uh, where can you go? Instead of clicking around in all these different places, and you may have it on your Google site, um, but we were asked to create a, an emergency links page, a clearinghouse of step by step. If this happens, then you need to report it here. You need to call this person and it takes you step by step through that process. So um, it's still under construction. Um, unfortunately, weather happened and weather got in the way of my job. <laughs> so we're working on that and we're going to get it um, in good order by the end of the fiscal year. This is something that we are tracking um, on the services side of the house to make sure that is ready to go by the end of the fiscal year. Um, another thing that we found is it really helps to have a, a standardized page with um, mutual aid Google site for every office. And as luck would happen, um, the Southeast Sioux uh, had the same thought and they already started working on it. So with that, I will turn it over to my co-presenter, Chris Knowles, about presenting here, and you can take it away. Thanks, Kelly. Get my window up here. There we go. Thanks a lot, Kelly, for uh, letting me speak. Uh, I'll try to keep this relatively brief. I do have to uh, provide some shout outs. First of all, Kelly, uh, Jenny, Randy, and Mike Hudson up at Central Region, thank you for allowing me to, to pitch this idea of a, of a standardized service backup page. And uh, I also want to thank Jason Shaman in Springfield. He helped me quite a bit in terms of uh, ideas and idea sharing. And then as far as the format, the structure, and the look, I recruited a couple of forecasters from uh, two other offices, Kelly Butler over in Wichita and Samantha Miklovitz over at Louisville. They uh, provided a lot of valuable input into what should be within this, this standard Google Sites uh, webpage. So thank you to all of you who have taken the time to, to support this idea and, uh, and to give me the time here today to talk about it. So. Um, one of the first things that I thought about uh, in terms of mutual aid and moving the agency forward using the lingo uh, in terms of the service backup Google Sites page was to 
um, create an exclusive mutual aid pull down menu to house our uh, mutual aid links and service backup is right at the top. Uh, we're also housing uh, remote uh, the remote vessel analyst program, a link to that information and to that site. So you can quickly spin up, of course, CWMA, Convective Warning Mutual Aid, the Central Region Sharing Repository and uh, the Southeast Sioux Training Initiative for our group. I uh, thought this would be a good idea to kind of pull this out and separate it so that we have a go to place for our mutual aid links. So to go to service backup now. Um, so when we're going into service backup, it, the word that kept coming into my mind was uh, the word launch. We're launching into service backup. We're getting ready to spin up into service backup. So a lot of the service backup sites that are out there now, everything is contained in pretty much in one page. It's, it's a you know fairly scrollable long page, if you will. And I, I wanted to condense that, you know, make this a standard that's easy to follow. Uh, the logical thought process when you're spinning up into mutual aid and service backup. So why not create a launch page? So here's the launch page that I came up with, uh, identifying our office, the three offices that we work with, no longer doing, as Kelly said, primary, secondary, and tertiary. It's, it's we consider all three. Quick operations uh, number and our email. And then in the main body of this launch page, uh, the first thing that we need to think about when we're going into service backup, be it whether we're providing it or we're receiving it, is we need to establish communications. So I've got the ops numbers here on the left, and I also have our Google Sites uh, chat rooms. Uh, quick link so you can fire up right into the chat room and speak to the uh, point of contact at the other office. This is where the two POCs engage and, and talk during the uh, mutual aid experience. So I have one for, in our case, Paducah and Louisville, Paducah and Davenport, and we have the Missouri NWS offices coordination, which we may utilize. Perhaps we'll also spin one up exclusively for the Springfield office as well. And then from there, of course, we want to document the service backup event from start to finish. So on the right, I thought of a, a natural progression start the documentation process. So what I did, and this is for our staff, they need to document the experience. I have a Google form in here right at the top. And uh, you know your start time, your end time, the different things that you need to remember to do uh, from you know the ADM, CRH, et cetera, all, all the things that you're supposed to do and you check them off and all this gets saved and, and archived. So all, all of the uh, experiences will be archived. And then just some quick links down at the bottom. But again, the standard is, simple you know simple and on point you know not a lot of fluff here so it doesn't scroll very far down this is where you document now the question then becomes well are we getting uh, are we receiving mutual aid or are we going to provide it for another office well when we're providing it for someone else this is for our staff we will go here to a dedicated page that will be for uh, our forecasters and up at the top uh, are the links to their sites pages and these links will be to their resource pages where critical uh, documents will exist, critical links will exist. So for example, I, I link directly to Louisville. There's their resource page that we will go to. And there is a standard that will be, and actually this is pretty good. This is close to the standard that will exist that we will provide, but uh, uh, quick links to their resource pages. Now, here's where the standard is is nice the idea of having a standard for those critical links those go-to links that we need uh, i'm going to pick on davenport a little bit uh, matt sorry but uh, you guys have an awesome backup page but it's different this looks a lot different than louisville's so the the resources that i need are in a completely different place this is a very well done very thorough sites page no complaint with it it's just that it's different right and we're looking to standardize this experience so that I don't have to be scrolling and looking for where their critical information and links are. We want to keep the same. We want to develop that muscle memory aspect, if you will. So, and there we will have a place for all this good hard work so that we, you know, we're not looking to obliterate this. We're, look, we're, we're going to just restructure here. So that one is quite a bit different than Louisville's. So let's go on. For our staff, um, dedicated radar comms, that's often very important. I have uh, instruction for them to spin up into that. 
GFE startup and shutdown is critical, obviously, and that requires a few steps. And then I have uh, additional programs for service backup, spinning up Warn Gen, uh, spinning up uh, hazard services, AVN FPS, getting the ADM out, all the simple quick things that you would need to get your workstation environment, your D2D, your cave GFE all spun up real, real fast. And then a supplemental additional information below that includes the service backup startup instructions and an ending service backup, that's from Central Region. And then Jason helped me with this, just quick information here, critical phone numbers, the ops phone numbers, cell phone numbers and fax numbers to the offices. And then important links, and again, maybe some flexibility here on the standard, but what we came up with shift duties, I need to know what I'm doing and what time stuff needs to be done. IDSS uh, packet folder is a critical one, you know, for a DSS packet or a quick weather story or social media post. I've got direct link to Slack channel for like Louisville, Springfield, Davenport. It'll pop up the Slack application directly on Windows and you're right into it. And then uh, the web page, Facebook and Twitter, we decided to add that as well. And this is it. This is all for the Paducah staff as they're backing up another office. Flip it around the other way now for uh, when we require backup. This is for the other office. So again, like with Louisville, you know, uh, this is for Louisville. I'm gonna click on the one that we've done, which is slightly different. And this is where Kelly and Samantha were really, really helpful. Uh, doesn't look a lot different than Louisville's, just has a, a few additional uh, inclusions. Uh, opera operations and important documents are in here, shift duty, shift log, uh, office calendar, for example, the COOP, the OEP. Uh, here's the operations dashboard, what needs to be done and when. It's right up front there. Again, maybe a little flexibility with the format here, but this is what we came up with. IDSS is right up front. We've got the calendar. We've got critical partner support information. You need to do a conference call, whatever it is. Uh, working with partners, uh, trigger chart, iris, etc. Then down below the bigger programs, uh, if you need to check something in severe weather, fire weather, aviation, or whatever, the links to the program areas. And again, a lot of offices, I, I've looked around at all of your sites, and you a lot of you kind of have this in a very similar format already, so it wouldn't require a whole lot of, of work, to be honest. I decided to include the Slack channels, uh, like so Louisville is, is backing us up. Uh, they can go right to the Paducah channel. Uh, Indiana Pathfinder, for exam example, Kentucky Pathfinder, et cetera. And again, it launches Slack, the Windows application directly for you. Then we have a place of residence right here for like Davenport. They got a lot of great information on their sites page. Uh, maybe they want to maintain that, uh, keep, it, keep it in place somewhere and be able to reference it. We have a place where you can put all of the work that you've done and, and we'll, it's a migration process. Maybe we'll streamline that and, and eventually, you know, pare it down a little bit, but somewhere to put what you've already got in place. A lot of good work by a lot of forecasters out there. So we're not looking to just, you know, like take Davenport's page and just put it off to the side, just move that information to a different place within this overall new short, concise standard. And then again, at the bottom, local and uh, regional resources are available. So it's just very, very simple on point, not a lot of thinking, just developing uh, muscle memory. And um, I'm going to talk with Kelly about this a little bit more, uh, but I'm sure some of you are wondering, well, will we have maybe a baseline? Will we have a template where, you know, Central Region can manage that starting point that we can work with, provide it to you. And it's like, okay, I got something to start with. So that is something I would like to finish up and wrap up and as part of this uh, launch process. Uh, so I do think uh, having a baseline with a minimum standard uh, established that we can share uh, ready to go is important. So I think that covers it, Kelly. Anything I missed? No, I think that does cover it. And like Chris was saying, um, this is your first look at this. It, it won't be the last. Um, so there will be more to come. Um, and do you mind if I take back control, Chris? Is that okay? There you go. All right. And just steal it back if you're not ready. Okay. So in summary, um, service backup and mutual aid are, we've been evolving this way over many years and we're just continuing and it's backed up by where the rest of the weather service is going. 
Um, offices are now considering a triad when they need service backup, but it's more than that. If you need mutual aid on things aside from uh, routine products and stuff that you got in AWIPS, basically. Um, remember to test your backup procedures, especially with your new uh, third backup. And be on the lookout for more information on the service backup page implementation. Um, the Southeast Sioux community is working on that, and I'm working with them to uh, get that rolled out to everybody so you know exactly uh, what to do and when and how. So if you have any additional questions, we'd be happy to answer them here, or you can email me, Kelly Allen, or Chris at Chris Knowles. With that, we'll hand it back to Jenny. Any questions? Great, thanks to both of you. Are there any questions for Kelly or Chris? So far, I'm not seeing any in the chat. Um, go ahead and raise your hand or type them in the chat if you do have questions. All right. Well, I am not seeing anything. Thank you to you both um, for presenting this. This is great. Um, and if you do think of some questions afterwards, you can reach out to Kelly and Chris.